Uh, so I'll start with the sidetrack. Brilliant for everyone, nobody getting nervous in here. Um, because they asked me beforehand, show something you've never showed before. So I figured I'd show something completely new that's taken directly from the maker movement into my part of the maker movement. So does anybody know about Jay Silver? No? The guy behind the Makey Makey, one of the two guys behind the Makey Makey. They made, made something called the Draudio. So I do some things that we don't tell people about. We kind of take the make movement into children's hospitals. So now you're the first to know that we do this. And we haven't said it to basically anyone except the kids at the hospital. Uh, but this is a large scale prototype, the first time it's been showed, of a weird medical journal thingy. Okay, are you following me this far? It's just a little bit scaled up. So the thought was to make this a little bit less scary for the kids and more fun. So what this does, this was, I can actually take my microphone and mic it up. So for example, this is fun, prototyping. Okay, it's on. It's to be able to paint sound on a large scale with watercolors but I'll paint with my fingers. Oh, it's very faint, but it's because. And this, this is drawn by uh, Eric, 36 years old, <laughs> when uh, the m primary target was making sound. So that's a real life first case prototype. Oh. Sound. And you can all play with it later because it's important. That's one of the little points. So we started with one little toy. And this is going to fill up with weird stuff. So don't be scared. Nothing is going to explode. Uh, I hope. And I've already misplaced the little clicker thingy. <laughs> so let's take you back to the first moment. I'm going to go like a rocky montage of weird prototyping because my part of this session is going to be the simple stuff. So, I have my favorite prototyping tool here. Does anybody, do you know what this is? You seen one, operated one? Yeah, I have to be careful. I have a cut here, and I've been using this for a long time. <laughs> They're dangerous. But I'm gonna take you back to one of the big first prototypes we made. It's a really cool product, and we were making monsters, as all designers do, you know. Uh, and I wanted to ask you, like, do you know what monsters and clothespins have in common? Think about that while I show this, take you back to the magical moment when monsters and clothespins merged. So we're making something that could bite stuff because basically, creatables, we hack productions. So we used big company surplus uh, materials to make little things, but I scaled this up for today so you could see it, the ocularly impaired and especially the people through internet, for example, in the video, because showing the real thing would be really weird. So here we have the, thi the thing. Anybody figured out what they have in common? Say it out loud and you win something. Ah, uh, scary. It's way too late to be able to like start, start participating. J I heard it. Jaws. jaws, that's correct. They have jaws. So we're making monsters because we were basically just not knowing what we were doing, but we're designing little things for surplus areas for huge productions and in flat plastic materials because it's very common. And in die cutting, for example, uh, there's a lot of waste. So uh, we figured, let's make something from this. So I was making like this little monster thingy that could like go around biting stuff. And all of a sudden, I, whoa, this actually bites my hand pretty well. Like it's, it's weird and it, it doesn't hurt when I put it on, like I click it on like that. I twist it off. So that's the first fantastic color matchable for your underpants, clothespin. 
clothespins are not good for a starting business to start selling. Does anybody know why? Does anybody know a single brand of clothespins? Well, we figured that out the hard way, but we have a patent. Yay. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you. But it has played its role in, for example, the strawberries, which I'll come to later. Uh, but the thing was, we got really good at developing all these little trinkets. And uh, we liked making the stuff. Uh, and we found this machine that could actually make really zero, like really small production runs. So this is a die cutting machine you generally used for scrapbooking. Do you know what that is? So we designed tons of different things. For example, the, the clothespin thingy, but also this magical little thing. So I'm using, using this thing here to make an object on stage. Drum roll. And out comes this arbitrary little object. I fold it out. 3D glasses for dogs. <laughs> Sorry, make a movement. We don't know what we're doing half of the time. Uh, we, but we don't censor ourselves, we just play around. What this is, was actually just a joke <laughs> for a, a business fair, but it is a portable smartphone stand that you can make from trash. <laughs> Woo! Really clean design line, so it merges the maker movement and stuff with, with like Scandinavian minimalism. So, <laughs> this is the thing. Like, Playfulness, really important. You started talking about play beforehand. And um, just playing around with the ideas is also like one of the major tools. Uh, and the second thing is to establish trust. So you can actually dare to show shitty prototypes, because shitty prototypes are the best. Because they leave a lot of areas of improvement. So you can start like mixing in and giving your thoughts on something instead of having something really fancy, which is tricky in the designer industry. So like industrial designers, we kind of figure out if you show something bad, that's part of your portfolio, and then you're, fu oh, sorry, I won't say that. It's not good. You have this sense of don't, don't show something bad. But we did this we, pretty early. We kind of, nobody bothered what lame things we made. Uh, so this guy came over to me and showed, I think I have an idea for a bike accessory. And it was a really floppy little thingy. And we developed the first prototype for this manual die cutting machine. So we invested a total of $100 plus $10 in materials because we, we kind of bribed uh, a factory to get this yellow waste with uh, the $10 worth of cinnamon buns for the Friday, Friday Fika, which is very common in Sweden. So it's a soft spot for factories. And uh, so we made this, the ass saver, which also is a prototyping of naming and branding. That's a huge risk. Ass is actually offensive in other countries in Sweden. We say ass all the time. Sorry about that. But what is it? It's an emergency mud guard that's there when you need it and gone when you don't. And you know, it might seem ridiculous. These are like ridiculous things in the beginning. But it is actually, this is what finances everything we do now. The ass saver is global. <laughs> it's completely nuts. We, we, we would never have thought this, but we had the immediacy, we had the stuff to make it from, like, from idea to a product in less than two weeks. And now, this is how we work with prototyping the next generation. We have gazillions of prototypes. Anyway, how does this correlate to all the other stuff? The red thread is not so trans or like uh, obvious here. But the thing is, all these things made or like laid the bed for, um, for the, uh, the next project, which, I'm, which is the last one, which is very, very uh, weird. But we were showing this, you know, the machine is nice, it can make the clothespin. So we were visiting India, and this has now, this is actually why I so spoke about the clothespin. We visited India because everybody solar dries. So clothespins should be a really great thing. We're gonna revolutionize India by just selling the idea, spreading these machines out, and they can churn them out from trash because they have a lot of waste. So we went there and uh, we gave away a machine to a school, and they never used it as a clothespin because turns out somebody's buying them clothespins. What they're not buying them is construction toys. So they started connecting these like this and building molecular structures and just playing with them in a way we didn't intend. So once again, they prototyped for us another use 
of these little thingies. So I took this with me, and this is like, it took a year, a year and a half, incubating, playing around, but I wanted to make a construction toy and do something in that industry. Because I would love to do something with edu education and toys and toys that can actually educate kids. And then this random TV show showed, uh, I think it was a hula hoop, a big hula hoop, you know, these ones. And uh, how wide it could become and spread and lock over something flat. And I figured, oh, we have flat materials, let's make something that we can click together with these flat surfaces and a round hole and just dimension the muscle of this thing. So uh, I sat down with my computer and designed a thing which does not really show that well. Here it is. Can you see it? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Magnificent and tiny. <laughs> this, uh, this is a construction toy and we chose to give it away. So it's an open source system. We didn't know how good it was when we did that. So, but we launched a Kickstarter with some videos and some stuff. And how does it work? So this is what we described in the video. So I'm going to take you back to the magical moment when we made the video. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. You take the little thingy. We didn't have a name when we started, but you put the other thingy in another straw. And now you have two straws. They look like drumsticks. This is almost like, wow, already. But there's a big reveal. The same thingy connects to the other thingies with a little, oh, did you hear that? That's design. Oh, no, I, I killed it with my fingers. That's, oh, yeah, wow. So you snap them together, and then we got this stick. <laughs> wow, a mechanical flexi thingy. Wand, and then you can lock it to any angle you choose, which I didn't design that, it was just an arbitrary thing. So now we've got a friction lock and now we've got this stick. So what does it do? Well, it lets you prototype just about everything. So I'm gonna go run very fast through weird, flexible constructions, like this, yay! <laughs> or learn by reverse engineering common household objects like the Little lamp here, you see in the Pixar thing? So you just copy things, and by copying things you understand how they work. And then, you can morph objects in 3D space. So you can try out and actually start manipulating objects that you shouldn't be able to manipulate. Which turns into, now it's an architecture investigation thingy. And you can also make weird Mobius stuff. So we didn't know what we were doing, but we're going to jump into a nice little thing. The last three points I have. It connects cardboard. It does all kinds of stuff. It connects to Lego Mindstorms, so you can prototype mechanical solutions with robots. We didn't design that. We were just playing. So, what I want you to take with you is a little tip. Trust, immediacy, apply your ideas. If you can create that, place where you can actually trust, show your things, make things, and start playing. You'll end up weird places, like the poster boys for Vimeo and their new TV ads. So, so uh, thank you for listening, and uh, hope to see you tomorrow. We're going to have a little playground with the strawberries. Thank you so much. <clears throat>